السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم افتح علينا فتوح العارفين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا أرحم الراحمين Today, inshallah, we will talk about Ash-Shifa bintu Abdullah and Abu Ubaidah ibn al-Jarrah radiyallahu anhuma. So inshallah, we'll start with Ash-Shifa radiyallahu anha. And uh, one day, uh, this uh, blessed woman became a Muslim. And she was of the very early uh, uh, women who became Muslims. So she pledged Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And uh, she uh, used to go to his home often to sit with Sayyidatuna, um, uh, Sayyida Hafsa, uh, the mother of the believers, and she would teach her how to read and write. She was from Quraysh, and she was known to be so wise. She had brilliant mind, and she was very smart. So she knew that uh, she was uh, uh, from the few women who could read and write. So she decided to... Uh, serve Islam. She decided to serve Muslims with all she can. She knows she has something that people do not have. So she decided to use this knowledge that she has for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So she used to be a teacher. And uh, she used to teach the female companions of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And by this, she was the first teacher, the woman teacher in Islam. And uh, she had a special position uh, with uh, the mothers of uh, the believers. And as I just mentioned, she had a very strong relation with Hafsa radiallahu anha. So events were taking place uh, in the new Islamic state and uh, Al-Shifa continued her jihad and continued her work for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when the men would be uh, fighting with the sword, she would give her knowledge of medicine uh, in the in the battlefield, and she would help the injured. She would help uh, those who need her help, and with this, she had a very special place uh, with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And she would always come to him and to ask him to discuss things with him. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam liked her wisdom and he liked her wide knowledge. This is a message for all women. Learn, read, do your best to be knowledgeable in as many fields of this life as you can. And there, is, there are a lot of hadiths and narrations that uh, talk about the uh, virtues of uh, the uh, well-educated people. So Ashifa was one of those very wise and very intellect, uh, very smart woman. Uh, she she was uh, very knowledgeable in the uh, uh, in medicine. And she also practiced Ruqya. Uh, and that was since early time before she became a Muslim. So in pre-Islamic period, she practiced Ruqya. 
And when she became to Muslim, uh, when she became a Muslim, she came to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and she told him, "I used to uh, practice ruqya before Islam. Can I do it again?" So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave her the permission to continue her work. And she would always listen from Sayyidina, hear from Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he, he used to say, Sallallahu al-afwa wal-afiyya, fa'innahu ma utiya ahadun ba'da yaqeenin khayran min mu'afat. So ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. Ask him for health, for, for well-being. For after being granted certainty, one is given nothing better than health. And if you wake up in the morning, you will be, and you are able to get out of bed, say, Alhamdulillah, I don't need anyone to help me get out of the bed. When you go to use the restroom, say, Alhamdulillah, I don't need any machines to help me get the urine out of my body. When you do, when, just feel the blessings the, of health that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with every single thing you, you, uh, you, you, you can think of. You are looking, you are seeing, you are hearing. You can walk, you can use your hands, you can think. Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all these blessings. And there is a charity, there is a sadaqah for having good health every day. You need to pray two rak'ahs of duha prayer. So Al-Shifa came to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he gave her the permission he gave her the permission to go on with her work. And she used to have to, to, uh, to, to, uh, to use a spell for a uh, uh, stink of scorpion, uh, a spell for the evil eye, and a spell of a namala. What, what is this? This is a certain dermatology sickness. It's a type of skin eruption that she, she used to know a certain spell, spell for that. And she used to say it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would give shifa for the person who she is doing the ruqya for. Now let's stop for a second. When you feel sick and you go to a doctor, don't think that the medicine this doctor gave you cured you. No. Allah made the cure on the hand of this person. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who cures. So when, when she came to Sayyidina Muhammad, and Shifa came to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said to him, Ya Rasulullah, inni kuntu arqi bi ruqan fil jahiliyyati min al-namla. وَقَدْ رَأَيْتُ أَنْ أَعْرِضَهَا عَلَيْكَ I used to, to, to say a certain spell to cure people from this skin eruption, from this uh, certain dermatology sickness, and I would like to present it to you. So he said, yes, show me, say it to me. And she said, Bismillah. And she said the spell. And then she said, Allahumma kshifi al-ba's nas. Ya Allah, I'm directing myself to you so that you give the cure to this person. You are the Lord of, of mankind. And it was said, the way she used to do uh, the ruqya, she would get uh, a stick of curcum and uh, she would do the ruqya seven times. And then uh, she would uh, get a clean place and she would uh, uh, rub that on a stone with a special vinegar. And then the outcome, she would rub it on the 
affected area. And with this permission, say, uh, Ashifa continued uh, to practice her, let's say, medicine that she used to, to uh, uh, do for the people. And not only that, she used also to teach them. But of course, when you want to teach something, you have to choose if the person is eligible for this knowledge or not. You don't give any knowledge to a person who is not, uh, who, will, who will use it uh, badly or who will not understand how to use it. No, you have to choose. Is that person ready to use it? And then you decide whether to give it or not. So, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, having uh, uh, seen what uh, she can, uh, how she, uh, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the cure through what she does, he asked her to teach her, uh, his uh, wife Hafsa radiallahu anha, the uh, ruqya of the namla. And why, if, if we stop, the word namla in, uh, in Arabic means ant. So this type, the reason that this uh, sickness is called uh, a namla, because the, uh, the, the, the sick person would feel that there are, there, there are ants on the area that um, uh, as if they are, running on this area and sticking him. And, and that's why they, this, this sickness is called sick, the sickness of an namla So he, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked Shifa to teach his wife, uh, Hafsa radiallahu anha, the ruqya of the namla And she said, دَخَلَ عَلَيَّ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ وَأَنَا عِنْدَ حَفْصَةً Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, came in one time when I was visiting Hafsa. So he said to me, Ala هذه, talking about Hafsa, Nemla, Kama Kitaba, would you not teach this one or this one, yani, uh, this one of my wives, this one, the spell of skin eruption, the Ruqya of the Nemla, as you taught her writing. We mentioned at the very beginning that she used to go to the house of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu wasallam to visit uh, Hafsa radiallahu anha, who she was in very good relation with, and she used to teach her read how to read and write. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu wasallam liked what Hafsa, what Shifa was doing, and he was always. Um, uh, uh, giving her a good position with him. And uh, he gave her also a house in Medina. And she lived in that house with her uh, son, Sulaiman, radiallahu anhuma. Now, uh, that was her life during the life of Sayyidina Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. After Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away, he, and of course when he passed away, he was so pleased with Ashifa. So Ashifa continued to be the teacher and the doctor during the time of Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu an, and later during the time of uh, Sayyidina Umar radiallahu an. And Sayyidina Umar uh, used also to, uh, uh, to give her a special rank and he used to talk to her. He used to take her advice. And he, uh, having found something special, so, so much knowledge, so much wisdom, he gave her uh, a position in the market. And with this, she was the first finance Muslim woman in Islam at the time of Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anh. So now, if we stop for a second, a woman can be a leader, a woman can be a teacher, a woman can be a doctor, a woman can be everything who, that can help building this society. 
And one of the poets said, الأم مدرسة إذا أعددتها أعددت شعبا طيب الأعراقي. The woman is a whole school. If you know how to, to, to have a good school, then the students who will graduate will be a whole good nation. This is the woman. This is the woman in Islam. And subhanAllah, uh, Ashifa used to be uh, very just, very uh, good person. And she used to say a lot of things, about, a lot of good things about Sayyidina Umar radiallahu an. And she used to uh, praise him and to witness for his virtues. Uh, one day she saw a few uh, young men walking uh, very slowly, talking very slowly, and she said, what's this? And they said, we are worshippers, uh, men of uh, worship. And she said, كَانَ وَاللَّهِ عُمَرَ إِذَا تَكَلَّمَ أَسْمَعْ Umar used to be a very strong man. If he would speak, people would listen. Everyone would listen to him. He used to speak loudly. He used to speak well. And if he walks, he would walk quickly, not like, not like the way you are walking. And if he hits, he would, it would be a painful hit. And he was a, a true worshipper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Umar radiallahu an used to visit her, he used to check on her, and he used to uh, check about her husband and about her son, and he would uh, give them guidance, and he would give them, uh, if they need anything, they, he would fulfill their needs. And uh, one time, uh, Ashifa uh, says that Umar radiallahu an came into my house and he found two men sleeping. And they were her husband and her son. So he said, What, are, what happened to these two men? Haven't they prayed with us? She said, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen, Sallaya ma'an nas. And that was during Ramadan, by the way. She said, Oh, uh, Amir al Mu'mineen, they, they prayed with people. Falam yazala yu salliyani hatta asbaha wa sallaya subha wa nama. So they were praying all the time during, or, uh, during yeah, yeah, they made ihya during the whole night. That was a night in Ramadan. So Omar said, I, I would prefer to pray the Fajr prayer in Jama'a with people congregationally. And that would be much better for me than going up all night and praying by myself. So, do your best to revive this sunnah of Sayyidina Umar and pray the, uh, Fajr prayer with jama'ah. You don't need to go to the masjid, but go pray it with your husband, pray it with your children, pray it with your father. So do your best not to miss the Fajr prayer with jama'ah. And that was how Umar understood religion. And his advice would, uh, advice would always follow the rules that Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has put. So Ashifa Radiallahu Anha was a very good uh, um, uh, female companion and she was the best teacher. She was an amazing um, physician. And more than that, men used to come to her to listen 
to the narrations of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And uh, of the hadith that she narrated, Su'il alayhi salatu wa salamu an afdali al-a'mal. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked about the best uh, things to do. And he said, imanun billah, faith in Allah. Wa jihadun fi sabili, fighting and struggling for the sake of Allah. وَحَجٌ مَبْرُورٌ and performing Hajj that is accepted by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Let's stop for a second here about and uh, think about what does jihad fi sabili mean? Fighting and struggling for the sake of Allah. The word jihad means to fight for the sake of Allah, but it also means to fight your nafs, to struggle against your nafs, the nafs would always ask you to do whatever pleases her, the nafs. But, so the, the person should always fight the desires, should always fight shaitan. This is one type of fighting, the one type of struggle. Another type of struggle is that when you have to walk up for uh, Fajr prayer, it's so cold. Uh, uh, you are under your blanket, warm, cozy, and you think of, okay, I have to get up, I have to make wudu, and I have to pray. This is a type of struggling for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's a struggle for worship. So we want to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for us. So uh, one day of uh, the 20th year of Hijrah, during the uh, caliphate of uh, Umar radiallahu an, the teacher and the physician got sick. She always used to help people and to cure people, but it was at the time when she could not even cure herself. And normally when, uh, when someone is sick, you make dua for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, please uh, get uh, uh, this person well again and uh, give him uh, good health again. Allah will answer this call if there is still time for that person to live. But if it's death time, then halas, nothing. So she passed away. She, uh, she moved to... Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but whatever she taught stayed and this is why we do our best to do something that would stay after death that would stay after we die that we can still get the reward for it after we die leave knowledge Teach someone. Teach, if you know how to read Quran, teach someone how to read Quran. At least teach them how to read Al-Fatiha. Because whenever they pray, they would read Al-Fatiha. And whenever they read Al-Fatiha, they would get the reward. And whenever they would get the reward for that, you will get a reward also. So leave something behind that will be continuous. Leave something that's called continuous charity. Put some money to, to help building a masjid. Raise good children who will make dua for you after you die. Build a masjid, dig a wall, uh, a well. Do something that would give you hasanat, that would give you good deeds after you die. So moving on, we will talk inshallah about Sayyidina Abu Ubaidat ibn al-Jarrah. Abu Ubaid ibn al-Jarrah was a thin, tall, very bright-faced man. And he had several nicknames. He was the, uh, uh, at the very, uh, uh, he became a Muslim at the very early time of Islam. So I think it was one day after Sayyidina Abu Bakr. 
and uh, he was a merchant. He was a friend of Sayyidina Abu Bakr. So the uh, titles he had, the trustworthy, the strong, the commander, the one who lost the front two teeth, two front teeth. And he was one of the 10 people who were promised paradise. And above all, his lineage meets with Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Fir. So uh, when he became a Muslim, his father, uh, his father was against Islam and he, uh, he even died as non-Muslim. But what he did, he tortured his son with the worst uh, torture that, that was possible. But the son stayed fast. The father got to the point that he was sure that he could not get his son to go back to be a non-Muslim, to go back to the, to the religion of the forefathers. So he left him. He, uh, he got despaired. He, uh, he knew that he cannot do anything about it. So I said, okay, Khalas, leave me. I, I don't care about you. Quraysh, after that, uh, he used to insult the Muslims, used to oppress them uh, badly uh, until Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, gave the permission for the Muslims to migrate to Abyssinia. And Abu Ubaidah radiallahu an was of those who went to Abyssin and who lived there uh, uh, safely, but he, he uh, couldn't leave Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He wanted to go back and he did. So he went back to Mecca and years passed, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala ordered and gave permission to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to migrate to Medina. So Abu Ubaidah was of the first people who migrated to Medina and that's why he was called Sahib al-Hijrat al-Hijratain, the Hijrat to the, the, uh, the one who, tra- who migrated the, the both um, immig- immigrants and he, it was the one to Abyssinia and the one to Medina. And there in Medina, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, uh, talked about uh, um, uh, uh, ask the immigrants uh, to uh, be uh, uh, brothers. So the immigrants were paired off with Ansars, and the leader of the Ansar, Sayyidina Saad ibn Mu'adh, was the other pair of Sayyidina Muhammad uh, of uh, Sayyidina Abu Ubaida radiyallahu an. It was the second year of Hijra, later, and the uh, two groups, the Muslims and the non-Muslims, started the war of uh, Badr. And the Muslims were victorious during uh, that uh, battle. But later, less than one year, it was Ghazwat Uhud, and uh, Sayyidina Abu Ubaida had a very special, remarkable position uh, in that Ghazwa, in that battle. So uh, when uh, uh, the Muslims were about to uh, win the battle, the archers whom Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam put on to, uh, uh, behind the army just to protect the army, they thought that the war ended and they ran down to get the booties. So at this time, Khalid ibn al-Walid attacked the Muslims from behind, from the rear, changing an Islamic victory into defeat. And 
Abu Ubaidah immediately noticed the danger around Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he immediately rushed to guard him. And uh, he had a special uh, uh, event, a special event happened at that time. So Abu Ubaidah radiallahu an saw that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, had the uh, his armor, uh, uh, the the uh, two pieces of the armor got into the cheeks of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he was bleeding. So he rushed to him, and Sayyidina Abu Bakr saw that he also rushed to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to to take it out, and Sayyidina Abu Ubaidah. Uh, looked at Sayyidina Abu Bakr and he said to him, أَسْأَلُكَ بِاللَّهِ يَا أَبَا بَكْرِ أَلَا تَرَكْتَنِي فَأَنْزِعَهُ مِنْ وَجْنَةِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم. Oh Abu Bakr, I, I ask you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to leave me to take care of it. I want to, uh, to extract it from the cheeks of Sayyidina uh, Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم. So Abu Bakr of course, uh, gave him uh, that honor. And Abu Ubaidah took the uh, one of these uh, 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 things that came into the, the face of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he took it with his front teeth and he pulled. When he pulled, he fell on the, on the, uh, on the ground and the, the piece was taken out of the face of the face of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and as a result he lost his front tooth then he did the same for the second piece that was in the cheek of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and again he fell down and he uh, his second tooth also was uh, pulled out when he pulled the piece from the face of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that's why he, he was nicknamed as Al-Athram, the one who lost the front tooth, Al-Athram. And he, Abu, Bak Abu Ubaidah says, this is the best nickname I ever had. We know he had a commander. He had he had uh, the uh, the the strong, the trustworthy. He 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 had different uh, nicknames, but he says this would be the best to me because it reminded him always of the time when he sacrificed himself for Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So then, after that. Uh, Battles ha happened, and he was always fighting against the non-believers. And Sayyidina uh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would always make him a leader. He was very strong. He was very honest. He was he was a true, uh, uh, trustworthy, strong per, uh, leader. And uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when it was the time of conquering Mecca, he divided the army into four divisions and he made Abu Ubaidah a leader on one of those uh, divisions. Then uh, it was um, also things happened after the conquering of Mecca, now the uh, tribes would come to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to witness Islam, to accept Islam. And one time there was a, a group of Yemen, Ahlul Yemen, and when they uh, 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 announced Islam, they asked Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to send with them to Yemen a person, uh, a companion who would teach them the religion and he would teach them the fiqh of the religion and Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to them come during the night and I will tell you I will send with you the trustworthy the strong so 
And all the companions who heard this uh, statement of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they all wished that they are uh, that person whom Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam called the trustworthy, the strong. And uh, uh, when it was uh, the prayer, after they finished the prayer, they were praying with Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Sayyidina Umar said, when say I, I never like to be the emir, the leader of uh, anything except for that time, because I liked this statement. This statement of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when uh, they finished praying and Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said assalamu alaykum, assalamu alaykum. And Sayyidina Umar at that time, he said, I would make myself tall enough just so that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his blessed eye would uh, look at me and choose me. But Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was looking into the crowd, into his companions, until his eyes met the eyes of Abu Ubaidah, and he said to him, come. أخرج معهم فقد بينهم بالحق في مختلف فيه كم you will be going with them and you will be a just person with the matters that they have dispute with. So he sent him, Sayyid Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sent Abu Ubaida, the strong, the, the trustworthy man, the companion, just to teach the people of Yemen their true religion. So this was Sayyidina uh, Abu Ubaidah during the life of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And on the day say, the, uh, uh, the, the uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away, Medina, uh, the Medina, everyone in Medina was panicking. But Sayyidina Abu Ubaidah had a very strong position at that time. He, he, uh, he went to uh, Sayyidina Abu Bakr and he asked him, uh, uh, Sayyidina Abu Bakr wanted to appoint Sayyidina Abu Ubaidah as the Khalifa after Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said to him, سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول I heard Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم said إن لكل أمة أمينا each and every nation has someone who is trustworthy وأنت أمين هذه الأمة and you are the trustworthy of this umma of this nation and uh, uh, he wanted to pledge to give him the pledge to be a khalifa but Sayyidina Abu Ubaidah understood it wisely. He was a wise person. He said, ما كنت لأتقدم رجلا أمره رسول الله أي أمنا. I would never accept to be a leader to someone who was asked by Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to lead the prayer. Remember when Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was on his deathbed and it was the time for prayer, he, uh, he ordered them to, or to tell Sayyidina Abu Bakr to lead the prayer. And Sayyidina Abu Ubaidah understood it wisely, understood it. He was smart to understand that Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam appointed Sayyidina Abu, Abu, Abu Bakr to be the Khalifa after him. And with this, Sayyidina uh, Abu Ubaidah was of the first people who gave the pledge to Sayyidina Abu Bakr to be, uh, to, to be the uh, Khalifa. He knew that this was an amana. This is a trust. And the, the one who is trustworthy should be trustworthy no matter what positions, what uh, circumstances change. So Abu Ubaidah was a humble, loyal, trustworthy person who uh, uh, took care of the Muslims uh, 
uh, all the time. And that, of course, was recorded for him. This, this moment when he gave the pledge to Sayyidina Abu Bakr, when he announced it to the Muslims, was recorded for Abu Bakr. If you want to apply something like this to in this dunya, always remember that there are some circumstances, there are some events that need you to stand fast and it will be recorded for you, especially when you are on the right path. Of course, there are people who are recorded, but they are recorded badly for their actions. But we, as Muslims, we have, we have to stand steady fast and to prove our points and to be proud of our religion, to be proud of our ideas when people are opposing them. We don't go with the flow. If people are doing something bad, it doesn't mean that, that this bad thing became okay because everyone is doing it. No. اللهم أرنا الحلال حلالا ورزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الحرام حراما ورزقنا اجتنابه. We always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us and to make us recognize what is good and what is bad, what is lawful and what is not lawful. And we ask him to guide us to make us follow the correct thing that should be done. So Abu Ubaidah radiallahu an was very close to Sayyidina Abu Bakr and he was his consultant in the political issues and in the uh, uh, issues of uh, jurisprudence also. So uh, when, when uh, some, some Muslims would ask for to uh, to have a leader uh, would ask Sayyidina Abu Bakr to appoint a leader to them to teach them. He would say, "Alaykum bil hayyini layyin, alladhi iza zulima lam yazlim, wa iza usiya ilayhi ghafar, wa iza qutia wasal, rahimun bil mu'minin." He would say, "You have to go to." Uh, Abu Hubaida, the easy to go, the one who is just. He, if someone oppresses him, he would never oppress people. If someone mistreats him, he would forgive them. If he is cut off uh, something, he would connect, get connected to others. He is very. He has a lot. Of, he has so much mercy to 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 the Muslims, but he is very strong against the non-believers. So these are the characteristics of Abu Ubaidah radiallahu anhu. He fulfilled the, uh, the words of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, in uh, Surah Al-Fatih, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the uh, description of the people of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the companions of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, Muhammadun Rasulullah, wal-ladheena ma'ahu ashidda'u ala al-kuffar ruhama'u baynahum, tarahum rukka'an sujjadan yabtaguna fadlan min Allahi wa ridwana simahum fi wujuhihim min athari sujood. Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. And those with him are forceful against disbelievers. They are merciful among, amongst themselves. You see them bowing and uh, prostrating, performing the prayers, uh, seeking bounty from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking his pleasure. The mark, there are marks on their faces from the traces of prostration. So, this was a true example. Sayyidina Abu Ubaidah was a true example of those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has described in the Holy Quran. 
So this was Sayyidina Abu Ubaidah. And once there was, uh, during the time of uh, Sayyidina Abu Bakr, the, there was a big army against the Byzantine and the armies of the Muslims gathered in a place called Al Yarmouk just to uh, fight the Byzantines. The chief commander of the army was Sayyidina Khalid ibn al Walid, and Abu Ubaidah was a commander on the center of the army. So the two armies uh, started, they started the war, and it was a fearful war. Before the army uh, uh, was uh, finished, Sayyidna Abu uh, Sayyidna uh, Abu Ubaida got a letter from uh, uh, from Medina, and it had two important things. The letter was from Sayyidna Umar ibn al-Khattab, and the first thing that was mentioned in that letter was that Sayyidina Abu Bakr passed away and Sayyidina Umar became the Khalifa after him. And the second order in that, the second thing that was mentioned in that uh, letter was that Sayyidina Umar was demoted in favor of Abu Ubaidah. So he, Sayyidina, uh, uh, Sayyidina Umar demoted Khalid ibn al-Walid, the, the, the commander-in-chief of the army, and he appointed Sayyidina Abu Ubaidah in his place. When Sayyidina Abu Ubaidah read this letter, he found, he, he thought that out of amana, out of trust, he has to conceal the caliph order to avoid chaos in the army. So when it was, when the army, uh, when the battle finished, he immediately, very humbly, took the letter and gave it to uh, uh, Sayyidina Khalid ibn al-Walid. And Sayyidina Khalid, he was, he was a very strong leader, but yet, uh, oh, he, he would comply to the orders of the Khalifa no matter what. And he said to Sayyidina Abu Ubaidah, يَرْحَمْكَ اللَّهُ أَبَا عُبَيْدًا مَا مَنَعَكَ أَن تُخْبِرَنِي حِينَ جَاءَكَ الْكِتَابِ May Allah have mercy on you, Abu Ubaidah. Why you did not tell me when you received the book, I would immediately step down and you would be the chief of commander of the whole army. So Abu uh, Look, listen, listen to, the, to this answer that was given by Sayyidina Abu Ubaidah. He said to him, you are, the lead, you are leading the army. I didn't want to, to change anything in that. It's not for the dunya that I want to be the leader of the army. This is not the, the main issue. The main issue is that we should have victory as Muslims. So imagine the moral superiority and the unselfishness of this amazing great commander. So this is, this is how, what our goal should be in this dunya. To be, to work for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and nothing more. And then uh, we are passing on time and uh, I'm going to mention this uh, very briefly. There was uh, later on uh, a plague. Um, before that, uh, uh, another point I wanna mention actually, uh, once Sayyidina Umar uh, missed Sayyidina Abu Ubaidah a lot. So he uh, visited him in uh, Sham and when he, uh, uh, Abu Ubaidah saw Sayyidina Abu Bakr, the Khalifa, he, uh, he shook hand, he kissed his hand, and he hugged him. He loved him so much. And Sayyidina Umar said, let me, take me to your home. And Sayyidina Abu Ubaidah said, what do you want to do at my home? You, uh, and you, you will not like what you will see in my home. 
Sayyidina Omar understood the message and he said, yes, I want to go to your home. When he went there, he found nothing. He said to him, where's your stuff? I see nothing except an old water skin, a sword, a plate to eat, and you are the chief commander? And he said to him, uh, uh, you could have arranged something for, for of comfort for yourself at home. But he told him, Tina Abu Abeda told him, I choose, I choose to live, I choose to live a simple way of life. And Sayyidina Umar radiallahu and cried and he said, We were all changed by dunya, except for you, Ya Abu Abeda. And later on, during the eighth year of Hijra, there was a plague and uh, epidemic uh, that broke in uh, the area where Abu Ubaidah was, and it spread among the army. Umar radiallahu an heard of it when he, when when the news of the plague broke, and he wrote him, immediately wrote him a letter. If my uh, he he said to him. Uh, I am in urgent need to you. If my letter reaches you at night, I strongly urge you to leave before dawn. And if you get my uh, letter uh, in, in the morning, I strongly urge you to leave before sunset. So Umar, uh, uh, Umar was scared that Abu Ubaidah would get the, uh, afflicted by the, uh, the plague. And he wanted he wanted to have uh, Abu Ubaidah back, but Abu Ubaidah said had no desire to save himself and leave the army dying. And he remembered the hadith of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he said, "If if you hear of uh, an area that uh, a plague spreads in." Do not get into that area. And if you are in that area, do not get out of it so that the uh, it won't spread. So what Umar was scared of happened. Abu Ubaidah became afflicted with the plague and uh, he died. He appointed, before his death, he appointed Mu'az ibn Jabal uh, as his successor. And Mu'az uh, uh, gave a uh, uh, talk to the uh, people and he said, uh, by God, I don't know um, uh, whether I have seen a man who had a more righteous heart, who was further from an all evil and who was more sincere to people than Abu Ubaidah. Ask Allah for forgiveness and ask for mercy for him. Uh, this was uh, Abu Ubaidah radiallahu an, And our hope, inshallah, is to raise uh, a generation that are the like of Abu Ubaidah. We wanted to raise a nation. We wanted to, uh, to raise children that would be coolness of an eye to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we have to start with ourselves. We have to be the good models that we want to raise our kids to, uh, how we want our kids to be. We have to show them that this is how you be and this is how we want you to be. And that's uh, what will please the messenger of Allah. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.